After the recent revelation by Paul that AI has been used to extricate John Lennon's voice from an old demo, the Beatles community has been awash with discussion and rumour, not just about AI and its use, but speculation about what exactly that final Beatles record will be and how and when it will appear. Now, before we get into all this, let me say that I have no insider knowledge about anything to do with this project. And if I did, I probably wouldn't be allowed to make this video. Everything I'm about to say is nothing more than an educated guess as to what and when something might happen. Although it hasn't at the time of filming this video been confirmed, I think it's clear that the song Paul is talking about is Now and Then. The original plan for the anthology series was to have a reunion track on each set, Free as a Bird on Anthology 1, Real Love on Anthology 2, and Now and Then on Anthology 3. Now and Then was actually the second reunion song they attempted, in June 1994. But after revisiting the song in another session in February 1995, it was abandoned. One of the main issues which prevented it being completed back then was the quality of John's cassette demo, which had a loud mains hum throughout, which was impossible to remove satisfactorily with the technology of the day. It's true that George Harrison wasn't keen on the song, but his opposition to it only really began after they'd done real love. Paul recalled George's attitude about Now and Then in the Mr. Blue Sky Jeff Lynn ELO documentary and appeared both amused and bemused about George's attitude towards the song, which he clearly liked and seemed determined to finish. <sighs> oh, fucking rubbish, this is. It's like, no, George, this is John. It's still fucking rubbish, you know. Oh, okay then. <laughs> so that one, that one's still lingering around somewhere. I'm going to nick in with Jeff and do it, finish it one of these days. The song clearly has a special place in Paul's heart, not because it was a song by John, but it reminded him of the last words John ever spoke to him, which were, think about me every now and then, old friend. AI, artificial intelligence, is a popular but divisive term which has been used not just by the media, but by Paul himself in a recent BBC interview, when he said himself that AI has been used to extricate John Lennon's voice from an old demo. I think the AI Paul was talking about was the same system Peter Jackson used to such great effect in the Get Back film, where he was able to bring out buried conversations and separate instruments. He called it MAL, Machine Assisted Learning, which I guess is a form of AI. And the demixing technology used by Giles Martin on the Revolver box set last year. Could that be called AI too? Now I see this as a kind of update to the system used by Jeff Lynne and Jeff Emmerich when they were creating Free as a Bird and Real Love for Anthology 1 and 2. The use of AI in this respect, i.e. for restoration purposes or for enhancing what is already created, is, in my opinion, a positive thing. What has got many people up in arms is the idea that it will be used to artificially create new music or replace an already recorded performance. And while there are a number of videos already on YouTube which do that, I don't think that this is the case with Now and Then. The situation even prompted John's son Sean to take to Twitter to clarify the story by saying, all we did was clean the noise from the vocal track people are completely misunderstanding what occurred. There have always been ways of denoising tracks, but AI just does it better because it learns what the vocal is and is able to very precisely remove everything that is not the vocal. He went on to say in another reply that the track turned out beautifully and I think everyone will be very happy. As for John, well, he was always into new tech and who knows, might have been in favour of AI. And the argument that it shouldn't come out because George hated it is a moot point. How would anyone know how he would have felt about it today? Olivia and Danny have so far done a great job with George's legacy and I have no issue trusting their judgement on this. So anyone claiming to know exactly what George or John would have done is just wrong. I find the restoration capabilities of AI very interesting and an essential tool for future Beatles projects. 
I'm fine with it, and as long as they don't include elements that don't belong to the four Beatles, I have faith that while Paul and Ringo are around to OK it, that won't happen. And that they are well aware that any product they put out using that technology must enhance and not spoil their legacy. Of course, there will be those who won't like it, or even the idea of it, but they don't have to buy it or listen to it. But I'm an optimist, and I see this current project as enhancing their legacy rather than spoiling it. And of course, every new project brings in new listeners from a younger generation, which is always a win in my book. Now, the next big question is, in what form will now and then appear? And what does it mean, if anything, for the Rubber Soul box set? Will now and then appear as a single, an EP, or be the lead-off track for Anthology 4? Or is it going to be part of something bigger? Well, there was a clue given by Peter Jackson himself in an interview back in July 2022, where he said, quote, I'm talking to the Beatles about another project, something very, very different than Get Back. We're seeing what the possibilities are, but it's another project with them. It's not really a documentary, and that's all I can really say. It's so technically complicated, I'm trying to work how exactly I'll do it. It's a live action movie, but it needs technology that doesn't quite exist at the moment. So we're in the middle of developing the technology to allow it to happen. I'm trying to anticipate what I might be able to do before it even exists. They're not fantasy epics, but they're pretty interesting. Now to me, that sounds like it could be a reworked anthology series. Broadcast in eight episodes in late 1995, and then later in greatly expanded form as an eight-volume VHS, Laserdisc and DVD set, Anthology was meant to draw a line under the Beatles' legacy. Since then, a longer so-called director's cut of the series has emerged, and has been circulating on the black market for some time. But this was nothing more than a first attempt at a finished version, which Paul, George and Ringo were shown, after which cuts were made. But new discoveries made since then, coupled with the advances in technology and the use of Peter Jackson's machine learning technology, makes it seem like the perfect time, not only for its re-release, but the revamp and upgrade it truly deserves. I watched one of the DVDs recently and was shocked at the poor quality of a lot of the interview footage, for example. So it's not outside the realms of possibility that that could be upscaled and added to for a new documentary. Certainly, if someone like Disney Plus were going to stream it, they would demand something more high-res and modern-looking than what was released on the DVD. A reworked anthology could be the perfect place to introduce restored sections of, say, the Star Club tapes, which I'm sure Peter Jackson has had a go at doing already. Also, more home demos, extended threetle jams, upgrades to tracks like Leave My Kitten Alone and That Means A Lot, and it would be the perfect opportunity to drop in Paul's avant-garde sound collage, Carnival of Light. Space could also be made for some more music from the 67-68 period that was not part of the Pepper or White Album deluxe sets. Some extra Magical Mystery Tour or Yellow Submarine content, for example, or the February 68 session that produced Lady Madonna, Hey Bulldog and The Inner Light. It would also be a chance to release some of the material left out of the Get Back film, which Peter Jackson has said he has ready to go. Giles Martin is of course the natural choice for producer. After all, he has both experience working with actual Beatles tracks and Peter Jackson's extraction software. Now given the success of Get Back, I can easily see an extended anthology series being streamed on Disney Plus at Christmas and maybe on a Blu-ray at some point. But although Disney hates issuing anything on physical media these days, at least Apple appears to understand that Beatles fans like and need physical product, so I'm sure there will be something to put on your shelf at some point. Now I know how angry some people get about Disney and streaming etc, but if you hate Disney more than you love the Beatles, that's your affair. But my love for the Beatles trumps my dislike of any media conglomerate. Now, the release of the Get Back film was announced in June 2021 and premiered five months later on the 25th to 27th of November. So is an official announcement close? And what does it all mean for the Rubber Soul box set? 
Well, I think that could still appear in the schedules later this year. The Revolver set dropped on October the 28th last year, having been announced on September the 7th, so there's still a way to go before any official announcement could take place. And if you haven't already, you can see what we think about what should and could be included in that set in another video on the channel. But what do you think about all this? Do let me and everyone else know in the comments. I'll be back soon with some more Beatles history, but I'll say bye for now and thanks for watching.